Hello everybody, welcome to another Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to apply a depth of field effect, very common in cinematography or in, in, in filming. And I'm going to show you how to apply that to a still picture just like this using some blur effects, guys. It's very, very simple. Well, it's not very simple, but there's a there's a set of steps that we can go through. And uh, anyways, let's do this. If you're following along, just go ahead and put in any old picture you got, as long as there's like a, you know, something in the foreground and something in the background. This one has a foreground, then sort of middle and then background to show it a little bit better than, than just a foreground uh, background. But uh, anyways, let's get right into this, guys. First thing, follow along with me if you'd like is on your layer, you want to go ahead, or your image, and you want to convert it to smart object. That is done through right clicking or double right clicking if you're on a mouse. Uh, if you're on a Mac, pardon me, not a mouse. Jeez. Come on, Curtis. Let's do this. All right, guys. The second thing you want to do is you want to head up top, and you want to go to your filter, and then you want to drop down into blur galley. Now, blur galley. Er -y, blur galley. Er eh. <laughs> we are going to go ahead and use a field blur. Now, when it, you first apply the effect, you, you can kind of see that, you know, there's some blur going on, but this really isn't what we're looking for. What Field Blur allows you to do is it allows you to put multiple pins on your image. So watch this. I'm going to place an image, a pin in the middle of this pear or an apple. I don't know. Is that a pear or an apple? I can't even really tell. Let's call it a pear because it's got a pear shape. Then I'm going to put a pin in the middle of the second pear or Apple, and then I'm going to put this pin in the third one. Now what we want is the depth of field effect so that the foreground is not blurred or in the background is blurred or vice versa depending on the shot. But let's just show you how to do it with the foreground. Let's do foreground not blurred. So this first picture or the first Apple or pear is not going to have any blur attached to it. So I'm going to take this blur here, I'm going to take the pin, and that when I hover over this little gray part on the circle, it allows me to adjust the blur. Also, if you look up in the top right here, you can also go ahead and adjust the blur manually that way. Both are fine. Um, so we're going to put the blur at zero. So this apple pear thing is in focus. The second one, we are going to blur it to, let's go with 15 pixels. So we've got a slight blur on this one. We've got no blur on this one. And then for the third one, we're going to make it a very, very blurry shot. So we're going to up that to 30 pixels. Again, this might not go into like a final image, but this is just to demonstrate the technique. So if you look at this carefully, and I'll just click off here. I'll just hit OK so it, it's applied. Um, we've applied it. So what's happened is, is we'll zoom in a bit. No blur, 15 blur, and 30 blur. So this would be a depth of field uh, effect. Now, of course, you guys can make a lot of different adjustments to it. If you double click on that, you can go back into it. Um, if you click on the, the front one, for example, let's just say it looks pretty good. Field blur looks good, but maybe we want to add in some noise. We want to make it a little bit grainier. So we'll go over here into the bar here. And so we'll go from effects over to noise and let's add in some noise why not right let's make some noise guys and we'll increase the size and it just gives it a little bit more of a grainy look on the second one for example we'll click on this one we're gonna let's see what do we got going on here on this one we got a little bit of grain applied maybe we'll we'll decrease the grain on this one and we'll make it a little rougher um, my point to you guys is you can go ahead and make adjustments after the fact and then on the third one, yeah, let's say we want to even make it more blurry, even though that would start to look a little bit distorted. Uh, yeah, we want to take it up to like 35. And again, you can make some changes to the grain, etc. Um, the only other thing I will mention very briefly is sometimes you're going to want to go ahead and put some other pins on the background. Because if you look very, very carefully, you're going to see that, you know, the, the back here is very blurred out. But on the left side, you know, it's not blurred out. So that could look a little bit dodgy if this was a you know if this was a final project so maybe you want to have it all look about the same so you just pull it up to 30 and you know maybe drop one over here pull it up to i don't know what are we at 30 because it's all in the background um you can go ahead and do little changes like that and you'll start to see the background sort of melts in a little bit better maybe we'll make one here uh, and we'll put it at like 15 
right? But then it starts to blur the, the top of the apple, right? You can see that, right? So I'm going to click off of it. Oops, nope, command did. My bad. If I click off and hit OK, let, us, let it update here. Um, we've got some blur here. So let's just go ahead and OK. Now we're almost there. Now what you want to do is we want to bring the top of this apple or, or pear, whatever the hell it is. Let's go with an apple. Uh, we want to make that back into focus because that kind of takes away from the effect. The way to do that is you want to make sure that you have black selected. And we're going to go ahead and paint on top of this little mask here. So this mask thumbnail, I'm going to click on it, left click on it. We're going to paint with black. And this is the way to do it. I'm going to it's selected white. I'm going to hit this little reverse switchy witch. And then I'm going to go to my paintbrush here. And we're painting again. We're painting oh, we're on the wrong one. We're painting on here. Eh. All right. And now watch. We're actually going ahead and bringing that back into focus. So we are going ahead and painting over that mask essentially. So this is just another more advanced technique, but it's one that you can call upon if you have like some overlap issues like that. Um, but guys, in a nutshell, that's how you go ahead and create a depth of a field effect with the blur gallery. In particular, we use the, uh, which one did we use? We used the, the field blur. And uh, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be back more with some more stuff shortly. Thanks for watching.